Lynch here. This is uh, our second section of the prerequisite chapter on solving inequalities, where we'll be doing um, a lot with inequalities, not just the linear inequality you saw before, but expand that into inequalities involving absolute values and rational and polynomial expressions. First, a little notation, and that is um, that now we're going to be using A new way to write inequality. X is less than 2 means all the points to the left of 2. And usually you shade it like this. This is called unbounded, an unbounded interval, because there's no bound to this left side. It keeps on going on forever. Well, interval notation says you could also write this as left parentheses negative infinity, comma, two right parentheses. And the parentheses like this means that it's open. It's an open interval because it's not closed. It's got an open circle on one end. In this case, you can't ever get to negative infinity. So we consider that end open as well, right? You can also look at um, another interval. Uh, this time I'm going to make it a bounded interval. Negative 3 is less than x is less than 1. This is bounded because both ends are um, stop. Neither end goes off to infinity. And let's say I want to have it be less than or equal to here, but strictly less than there. Or let's, let's make them both less than or equal to. Now our new notation is like this, and we use brackets to represent the fact that we actually touch this number, negative 3, and that's what makes it a closed interval. Closed interval. So just stuff a little on the new notation. I'll understand if you answer your, uh, if you use either type of notation when you answer your questions. But you have to realize that you're going to be asked questions when sometimes this interval notation is used as opposed to the more traditional uh, less than or greater than symbols. Okay. Now, the properties are basically the fact that you can do anything to either side and you preserve the inequality. Except you got to watch out for this. You've got negative 3x is less than 6. When you divide both sides by that negative 3, it essentially then changes the direction of the inequality. So that's the one thing you have to watch out for. Multiplying or dividing by a negative number will switch the direction of inequality and get x is less than negative 2. Solving linear inequalities in one variable then is a lot like solving equalities, which we just did. So you've got 3x minus 5 is less than 8 minus 2x. Add a 2x to both sides, so you get 5x minus 5 is less than 8. Add a 5 to both sides, 5x is less than 13, so x is less than 13 fifths. Now, the whole time, we never changed the direction of the arrow because we never multiplied or divided by a negative number. Now, absolute values, though, this is where it gets a little tricky because the absolute values, you don't know sometimes if the expression is positive or negative that's inside the absolute value. So let's deal with the two cases. If you have absolute value of something like x minus 3 is greater than 2, we split this up into two cases, and we get x minus 3 is greater than 2. And the thing is, the other case is a little different. It's x minus 3 is less than a negative 2, separated by an or. So you get two scenarios out of this. A lot of times kids mistakenly just say x minus 3 is greater than plus or minus 2 because they figure the absolute value is creating that plus or minus. But it's a little trickier than that because in the, this case right here, let me just show you in green where this is coming from. This case actually assumed that x minus 3 was negative, and so you get the opposite of x minus 3 is greater than 2. And then when you divide both sides by a negative, that's where this negative 2 comes from. That's also what's switching this greater than symbol to a less than symbol. Now, this stuff right here, you don't have to show every time. I just wanted you to have a little understanding of why we get these two cases. 
So let's continue on with the, the problem. And we get x is greater than 5 or x is less than 1. And you end up with a solution set that looks like this. All the points to the left of 1 or all the points greater than 5. Now note a little bit of what we talked about the other day. This is saying the distance from x to 3 is more than 2. So if you look at 3, notice how 3 is smack dab in the middle here. And what we're saying is the distance from x to 3 is more than 2, so go more than 2 away from 3. So that's why absolute value greater than creates these two inequalities like this, these two sections. Okay. Now contrast that with if it was absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 2. So I'm going to jump right down here to the answer uh, and look at the answer visually. Instead of going more than 2 away from 3, we're saying the distance from x to 3 is less than 2. So we're going to go two steps each way and get to 1 and 5, but say now I want to be less than 2 away from 3. So that means I'm going to get everything in between, and we get this compact form of an inequality, all the points between 1 and 5. And so hopefully that connection in black there will motivate you as to why we then proceed here when it's absolute value less than into a compact form right away, x minus 3, and put it between negative 2 and 2. Instead of separating it like we did with the absolute value greater than case, we compact it and know that we're going to end up with just a line segment for an answer, not two separate rays, but a line segment. And so we add 3 to all three parts, and we get 1 is less than x is less than 5. Okay? So when you have absolute value less than, you expect to get a compact form like this. And our new notation would be like this, actually. It kind of looks like the point 1, 5, but that actually means the points between 1 and 5 when we're talking about just one variable, x. Okay. Now, when we start getting into um, these other things, um, let's just do this for a second. Solving polynomial and rational inequalities, it gets a little trickier. Here with inequalities and so forth, we had certain steps we could always go in certain directions. But when you get something like x minus 3 times x plus 2 is less than 0, you can't just send both less than zero. That's basically saying this and this are both negative. You multiply two negatives, you get a positive. So that can't possibly be the scenario. So what you have to do is first look at x minus 3 times x plus 2 equals 0 to get x equals 3, x equals negative 2. These are the critical numbers. And they're critical in our analysis of when this whole expression is either positive or negative. And now you can just go to a chart. And a number line chart is your best. Put these critical numbers in order, negative 2 and 3. And you can list your different factors here, in this case x minus 3 and x plus 2. Make some spaces on your chart like this. Now, notice how I use the critical numbers as separators, but then also I put some spaces on either side. So I want to see what's going on with these different factors as we go along the number line for x. So x minus 3, here when I'm to the left of negative 2, is actually going to be negative. And it stays negative in here, because if I put a number like 0, and 0 minus 3 is negative 3, so it stays negative. At 3, x minus 3 is 0, and that starts becoming positive. Because that's what happens with a linear factor. It's a straight line. Once it crosses the x-axis, it's going to stay positive. So it's negative, 0, and then positive. x plus 2, on the other hand, starts off negative as well, but then at negative 2, it's 0, and then it becomes positive, positive, positive. So now, in summary, you can look at what this product is and say x minus 3 times x plus 2. And I just multiply negative times negative to get positive. Negative times positive to get negative. 
Positive times positive makes positive. Positive times positive makes positive. So now this thing is negative here. So our solution is all the points between negative 2 and 3. Negative 2 is less than x. It's less than 3, which you can write as, in our new interval notation, as just plain um, negative 2 comma 3. That's the chart approach. Uh, the other approach I'll show you in class is you could just sit there and try points in each of these sections here between uh, something in the point between negative 2 and you put it right into here. But the chart report approach does come uh, handy when you get a lot of factors going on. And so if you just use the one number line approach and test points in each section of the number line in the original inequality, see if it works or not, it can sometimes be a lot of calculating. This is meant to simplify your calculations. Okay, and I believe that's it. Um, solving inequalities involving absolute values, we did that. We looked at uh, solving polynomial and rational inequalities. I suppose what we still need to look at is a rational inequality. Like if you have x minus 3 squared times x plus 2 over x minus 5 times 3x plus 1. Wow. Less than or equal to 0. Okay. Well, first, your critical numbers are those things that will make the numerator equal to 0. So that would be x equals 3, x equals negative 2. And the denominator equal to 0 and that would be x equals 5, or x equals negative 1 third. Now, the things that make the denominator equal to 0 will actually make division by 0, and those will be undefined. So now we set up our number line, and put all these critical numbers in order, negative 2. And don't worry about the spacing, because you just want to basically get them in numeric order. And then look at all your factors. Now, notice I went well to the left of negative 2 here, so I could squeeze in all my factors. The x minus 3, the x plus 2, the x minus 5, and the 3x plus 1. Make a nice table like this. And then bring all the critical numbers down. And then analyze how the signs change. Well, it's 0 here at x minus 3, so it's negative before it and positive afterwards. And x plus 2 will be 0 at negative 2, negative, and then positive. And there's usually a trend, negative and positive. You know, the only exception might happen is if you've got something like a 3 minus x, and that would reverse it and go positive and negative. Uh, 5 will be 0, x minus 5 will be 0 at 5, so it goes negative, 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 positive. And 3x plus 1 will be 0 at negative a third, so it goes negative, negative, positive, positive, positive. Um, hang on one second here. Uh, Call this the whole thing. The whole expression. We can just count the number of negatives. An even number of negatives multiplied or divided is going to make the whole thing positive. Here we've got an odd number of negatives, so it's negative. We've got an even number of negatives, so it'll be back to positive. Here there's just one negative multiplier in here, so it's negative. And here it's positive. So we're asking, when's the whole thing negative less than 0? So that's this section and this section. So we're between negative 2 and negative a third. And we're between 3 and 5. Now you also have to consider, it says less than or equal to. But you can't quite just put less than on all these. Because only 3 and negative 2 actually make it equal to 0 because they're in the top of the fraction. 0 divided by a non-zero number is 0. So we're going to include negative 2, and we're going to include 3. But 5 and negative a third actually make division by 0, which is undefined. So that's not part of the solution set. So visually, we include the point negative 2 and 3. That makes the whole thing equal to 0. We don't include 5 or negative a third, because they make it undefined. And there we have all this stuff in between. Okay. And again, if you want to do that in our notation, it's, it's easy. Okay? All right.